Hello CQ, calling CQ. Hello CQ, looking outside North America. This is Victor Oscar One Fox Oscar Golf. In the world right now, there's two million hams. And when I say hams, I'm, I'm using that term synonymously with amateur radio. Canada has 44,000. The only two countries in the world that don't allow amateur radio operation is North Again? Korea and Yemen. The VO1 Fox Oscar Golf. Who's the other station calling? My name is Larry Horlick. My call sign is VO1FOG, and I've been a ham radio operator since 1984. I've been interested in this since I was a kid. When I sit down here and I say, oh, what I'm doing is I'm pushing a button here and I'm taking my voice and that radio is converting it into electrical signal, sending it out through an antenna. The amount of electrical energy that he's receiving is so minuscule. It's, it's like, it's like a, a human hair in an ocean. It's that small. But yet he can, his equipment is able to decode my voice as clear as I'm speaking now. And that fascinates me to this day. We basically have three ways to send radio waves. You can send it over what's called ground wave, but Marconi's discovery enabled you to be able to send a radio wave from a transmitter up to the atmosphere, reflect it off of the ionosphere, and come back down at some point distant from the transmitter. And that we call sky wave propagation. There's a third way, and that's through space, either by orbiting satellites or uh, bouncing the radio waves off of something that's in orbit, like the moon. We can, hams can, and do it on a regular basis, bounce a signal off the moon and come back to Earth. Is anybody using this frequency? This is Victor Oscar One Fox Oscar Golf. Ham radio is, for at most periods of time, it's a hobby. It's a, it's a way for uh, amateurs to talk amongst other Newfoundland amateurs, other Canadian amateurs, or all over the world. I talk all over the world on a regular basis. But the existence of ham radio is really about something more, much more important than that. And that is the ability to be available to carry out communications when traditional mechanisms of communications fail. So I'll say 7-3, thanks very much for the call, and I hope to work you under better conditions next time. 7-3 for now, IK4, Mike Fox, Mike, B O one fog over. The internet is just another form of communication. But the problem with the internet is that it is so interconnected, but as determined by its name, that if one little piece of that internet fails, it can sometimes bring down the whole internet. And as ham radio operators, we would like to be there if uh, traditional forms of communications, which in now includes the internet, goes down. Every ham station is totally independent. And that's the difference. In most countries, um, that is the reason why they allow ham operations, is so that, uh, they're able to, that the hams are able to step in if need to be. It doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen often, but um, you know, as, as the world becomes more dependent upon interconnected communication systems, the chance of a, of a communications failure becomes larger. The licensing process is really a verification of your skill. If you have a ham radio transmitter and receiver, that piece of equipment is capable of transmitting on um, frequencies in the commercial radio spectrum. Ships operate there, air traffic control operates there. You really have to know what you're doing so you don't interfere with those operations because it could be very dangerous. Okay, Silvano, very good, thank you very much. I often okay, talk to people to on the air and they'll, the they'll ask down. me, are you, are you close to St. John's? And almost immediately I, I kind of get the, where the next question is going to be, right? 
is, oh, you're close to St. John's. Have you ever been to Signal Hill, right? Because from a ham, that's the beginning of ham radio. Signal Hill was the beginning of ham radio. Victor Oscar one, Fox Oscar Golf, Oscar Echo five, Sugar Mike Elephant. Okay, Hans, very good, good copy. Signal coming up now five and seven. Every ham operator has their own interest area. My main interest is in uh, talking to people in other countries. I'll hunt around on the frequencies, and uh, if somebody is also looking for someone to talk to, then they will answer your call, and then you'll either have a, a very short communications, uh, give your name, your location, your call sign, obviously, because that's a requirement, uh, maybe the weather, but it could evolve into a, uh, a longer uh, uh, chat about something. Some people ne don't even have one of these, don't even have a microphone. The radio has the capability to do it, but they don't even use it. They sit down and they have all their QSOs in Morse code. Because they like it. Because they like it. Well, um, nobody asks why. I mean, as hams, we don't ask why do you like this or the other. We just, you know, we accept it, right? If that's the way you like to do it, that's fine. That's two guys there now talking back and forth. Instead of giving a signal report. There are a lot of people who consider Newfoundland to be the best location in terms of propagation, radio propagation in the world because of our, our location kind of out in the Atlantic, midway between, or a little closer to North America, but kind of between the two continents, you know, and, and we're stuck out. So we're, we're in fact, here, um, I have, last week I was talking daily to South Africa. Every day, South Africa was very strong signals here. Nobody else in, in, uh, in, the, in the continent could hear uh, South Africa at that time. And it's probably because of our unique geographic location. Uh, 57, Nicola, with some QSB. Five and seven with some QSB. A beautiful day on this side today. A very sunny. I'm going from my radio station to whoever I'm talking to direct. And that interests me in, in, a, in, in that way. So microphone back to you. Hopefully you're still copying me okay.